Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Toy Tactics. In this sponsored video today, we're going to talk about 10 top tips that I've been learning over the last few days while I've been spamming my way through the campaign. I've been having loads of fun with the physics and all kinds of stuff like that. Learning about archers, the different spells and the blessings. And uh, yeah, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about 10 top tips that I've learned over the few days. Been an experienced RTS player, what I can do to help you win in this game. Also, just remember this game is available on Steam as early access to so be sure to head over there and get this game if you like what you see. Okay, so the first tip I've got is time is on your side. Whenever I start a mission in any game, I always check, am I on a time limit or do I have unlimited time? And on this game, you actually do have really unlimited time because you have the, uh, the uh, generosity of the pause button. So also, if you're in a rush and you want to speed up a battle, you know you're going to win it. You can press um, super speed or super, super speed speed things up but the the main benefit here is that you've got a pause button so no matter how bad things get on the screen you can press pause you can reevaluate you can redraw your formations make sure you've got the best angles and of attack and stuff like that or the best uh, angles of defense or best formation for defense you can redraw your formations to make sure you've got the best defensive setup and then you can also decide which spells you're going to use and when and all kinds of stuff like that so yeah time is on your side that's tip number one Okay, so the next tip I have is all about having the biggest concave when taking a battle with your enemy. So it's probably, concave is probably one of them words from when I was at school or college. I probably thought, why why on earth am I learning this, this word concave and convex? If you Google the two uh, the two terms, I'm sure you can find a diagram about what concave and convex means. But basically, concave means you want to try and wrap around your enemy. That's basically what I try and describe it as, or you want to try and have a semicircle around your enemy and the reason you want to do that rather than having like a square formation is that you have the biggest surface area as many of your units are fighting or attacking at the same time with very little idle units or even zero idle units okay so next tip is all about targeting the ranged units first so sometimes when you attack an enemy they'll have multiple different classes they might have infantry but they also might have archers or ranged units of some kind so more often than not when you fight infantry, the, the ranged units will also be in range and able to attack you and be dealing damage basically for free. So you basically want to try and take them out first without actually upsetting the infantry. So try and take out the ranged units first, fight that battle, and then move into a more 1v1 versus the infantry. So you're kind of 1v1 in the archers without the support of their, their infantry, hopefully, as long as you haven't attracted them. But then also then move in to attack the infantry and finish them last. So yeah, kill the ranged units first. Okay, moving on to tip number four then. So occasionally in Toy Tactics, you will come across these kind of secret chests that contains powers that are going to make your troops more powerful. And you can kind of alter the characteristics. Like there's uh, there's one that like kind of sets the enemy on fire when you're fighting them. And there's one that like defends you against uh, ranged units and, and archers and stuff like that. So you might want to switch later on in the campaign which blessing you kind of have. And if you ignore these chests without finding them and without getting the power out, out of them, you're going to weaken yourself later on in the game. Okay, so as you progress through the game, you're going to get different spells and different blessings. Now, I have two tips here. One of them is remember to use these uh, spells and blessings. Remember not, not to just stir up your points and just sit them idle. You want to at least be selecting something, whether it's the, the best option or not. But the second tip that I've got here, which I don't know if it's quite the best yet, but it's been working for me so far, is select all the level one spells in, in the early uh, in the early game. So you've at least got like three or four different ones recharging at any one point. And just remember as well, by killing enemies and killing their souls or collecting their souls, that's what charges up your spells. Okay, so one cool thing that I really love about this game is actually when you get to the defensive missions. Things like level 4 in the campaign, where you can actually defend a tower. And I, I, I've always loved, throughout my whole childhood, loved any kind of tower defense games or games we have to defend against oncoming waves, whether it be in Command and Conquer or anything else. So this one is a really fun one. Uh, just a, a little top tip about that. But um, when you're defending like this, all, you always want to make sure that all your defending units, all your ranged units can fire at all times. So get like a really good surface area. We talked about concave before. Well, it might not necessarily be a concave here, but you want to get the biggest surface area where all your ranged units can fire. And remember as well, they're stronger in towers. Okay, so keeping on the theme of defense, then the next one is about walls or blocks or the bottom right icon here is it's called limes, which I think is for limestone. And it's basically uh, a spell that you can use once you've charged it up to drag a line on the map and it creates a line of blocks or, or a wall that slows the enemy down. It can't hold the enemy back indefinitely. I haven't actually tried 
uh, deploying them on top of each other yet to see how high of a wall you could make. But it does slow them down significantly, so um, you can then use your ranged units to pick them off or just trickle feed them through so your ground army can then deal with them in their smaller numbers one by one rather than a big blob together. Okay, so keeping on the same theme as spells then, so you just need to be aware of this little thing called Friendly Fire. So whenever you start any game, doesn't matter what it is, you always want to check if you've got Friendly Fire on or off. And I can confirm that in this game, it is on. So you need to be careful when you're doing splash damage uh, spells like the Rain of Fire or like the, uh, the, the bombs that you can drop. You need to be aware that they will harm your own units as well. So be very, very careful and make sure they're rolling down the hills to the enemies to blow them up and not blow up your own guy. Okay, so in this game, you may think that once you've got a group of units, you can't separate them down into smaller groups. If you've got 40 or 45 infantry soldiers, you may think they're all together and that's that. You can control the formation of it, but you can't separate them into smaller groups. That is wrong. And what you can do is actually enter the brush function, draw your first group of units where you want them to be in like a little small line or a small circle, whatever formation you want them to be in, and then start drawing the second, third, fourth, however many groups you want. So this is really useful if you want to attack multiple groups of enemy units at the same time rather than just attacking them one by one. Okay, so 10th and final tip, and this is something I didn't really realize until I actually saw it happening. It's about Centuriata, your like kind of hero unit or your large unit. So not only is he really good in like close combat, he can basically wipe out entire armies of things, but he's also really good from range as well. So in this example on the screen, I'm basically using him as defense, like the last line of defense. You want to basically make sure he's got enough range to throw his spear. Now, when he throws a spear at an enemy, it's probably going to be a one-shot. And he can take down a number of enemies before they even reach him, which enables you to have a greater chance to win the battle. So, yeah, as you probably figured out by now, Toy Tactics is not like your regular RTS game like Command & Conquer, StarCraft 2, these type of games. But there is a heavy focus on physics, formations, and that kind of cartoon kind of style within this game remember you can find out more about it on steam you can check out a trailer remember it's on early access available on steam and i'll leave a link in the description for you to check it out